Hello, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes and I am back with another comparison video. In this video we're kind of comparing two tools which are often confused with one another. They are quite different though and used for different things. This is Figma or Framer. In our opinion these two shouldn't even be compared but we're going to go through the differences on both and which one you should look at using and when. So me personally, Victoria from Coastal Themes, I am a UX UI designer by trade which means I design web and apps for a living and then I pop onto Framer not only to film these tutorials but when I'm looking to build a client website or my own website and build something very easily using low or no code and put it live quite quickly and put it live straight to the web without any complexity. That being said that is the big key difference between Figma and Framer. Framer allows you to ship and publish actual websites like landing pages, marketing sites, and so on. It is at the moment not an e-commerce platform, it also isn't a membership site platform, but it is best for these types of marketing sites, maybe a blog, maybe a portfolio site. And you can see here, I'm jumping through these pages. This is how you kind of build your pages. It's all visual. There's no coded backend, which you have to go into and get confused about. You simply click, and edit and delete and move things around and change the styling. So in that way, it is quite similar to Figma, the user interface, the way you use the platform. Ultimately, you could come into Framer and design something like you would design on Figma. You could create this whole layout, you could export this as an image and you could send it to your client and say, I've designed your page and another developer could go, go build it in code. So that is completely possible on Framer. It has all those capabilities because it needs to, so you can build a site and ship a site. But I wouldn't say that it that's its core functionality. The core functionality is quick, real-life prototyping for marketing websites and creating blogs, creating forms, connecting it with third-party plugins such as MailChimp and you can see here there's loads of different interactive things you can add. You can link Trustpilot, Twitter, Instagram, you can even add OpenTable for restaurant bookings, you can embed coded elements and then you can also implement your own coded elements which you build with AI or build with a developer or code yourself. You can incorporate code where needed especially for things like animation, and custom little features you need. And then when we jump over to Figma, you can see here the interface is quite similar. We've got a left hand bar and a right hand bar. And then if I click on one of these screens here, which I have, so it's the same concept. You have different frames on the screen. You can see the concept of drop downs with styling effects and sizing effects. All is quite consistent with what you see on Framer. So let's quickly toggle between them. Click on element, styling on the right hand side and layers on the left hand side, which is very similar to Figma. So it is very understandable why you might get confused between the two. But the main difference here, so if we're looking at Figma, what you can do is create very sort of basic and I guess quite complex prototyping. But this is simply prototyping the design. It's not linked to the internet, you don't put it live, you don't publish it, you're simply designing it. So if I hit play, I can see here, I can make a clickable prototype. I can make the buttons and the fields interactive, but I cannot make it live to the app store. I can't put it live on the internet. I can also collaborate with other people. This is a really strong feature of Figma. I can invite my developer to my Figma file. I can invite another designer. And you can have multiple people working on the file at the same time. And then when I'm ready, I can mark something as dev ready. And then I can switch over to dev mode. And you can see here, we've got dev mode, which you need to upgrade to access, but you can then start to copy the language, the CSS, and developers can use this platform as well. So, I mean, Figma has tons of different services. This is just one of them, but they have this, they have Figma Slides, they have Fig Jam, which is a lot like Miro, if you're familiar with that. So that's great for workshopping. So Figma has a lot of things going on, but ultimately it's a design tool. Even here, we're looking at these. These are mobile app screens. 
Framer doesn't cover mobile apps. Framer is simply marketing websites. Figma, I could design for mobile apps. I could design a website. I could design a web application. I could design a user interface for a car, anything. So it is mostly design. We're not building it. It doesn't go live. It's just the design. So which one should you be using? We would say that you should be using Figma if you are a UX UI designer or a graphic designer, or if you're needing an easy design tool to design screens, to design slide decks, to workshop with other people and other teams. And if you're in the software space or you are looking for something to build a really robust design system, Figma is really great for this. If you are looking to build something live and interactive and publish something to the web, without using code, you should use Framer. So if you're looking to publish your company website, if you're looking to make a portfolio for yourself or a blog page, Framer is for you. So yes, that is it. That is our comparison between Figma and Framer. So let us know what you use in the comments, if you've used Figma before, if you've used Framer before, if you think there are a comparison to one another, and if there's any features from Figma you wish were in Framer, and vice versa. And that's it from me today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!